Okay, I think we'll start up our, our next uh, talk also on Conodonts from, from South China is Kai Hu, and uh, I turn it over to you. Take it away. Okay, uh, it's okay now? Yep, okay. All right, thank you, Bill, and uh, thanks, Lucas, also for organizing this workshop. And uh, thank you, Xiangdong, for bringing bring us up the background and uh, specific Natasha, Natalia for the introduction of the Russian uh, sections and material. So uh, I'm Ke Yihu from uh, Nanjing University. This talk is about the conodons from the Nanjing section, which may provide some, uh, I hope, some useful information for the global Casimovian stage. And uh, next, please. Next slide, please, yes. Okay, thank you. No, 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 go back, please. Okay, here is the outline of this talk. First, I will give you some general information about this Nachin section. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the Nachin section is located at the Guizhou province, as you can see in the map on the left. South China. It is a GSSP candidate for four Carboniferous stages. Those are Sapohovian, Moscovian, Kazimovian, and uh, Gazalian. It is now very convenient to access. It only takes several hours to travel from uh, Nanjing city to the Guiyang, the capital of uh, Guizhou province, and then by car to the Luodian city, and then by car to the section. Only several hours. Uh, next slide, please. During the Carboniferous and uh, Permian, South China was located at near the Palo Equator. Uh, you can see in the right. The Nachin section was at the margin of the Lodian Basin. You can see on the left. And uh, deposited a deep water carbonate succession. Next slide, please. And uh, here is the outcrop of the Nachin section. It is well exposed along a highway. The Devonian, Carboniferous, and Permian strata are well exposed along this road. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Here are uh, some close-ups of the outcrop of the Moscovian Casimovian boundary interval. Sorry, please go back. Well, yeah, I think uh, there are some delay. Eh? Never mind. Here are some uh, close-ups of the outcrop of the Moscovian Casimovian interval. They are mainly wacky stone, pack stone, and uh, green stone with church bands and nodular. Conodons are very abundant through the whole section and, of course, in this boundary interval. Next slide, please. Uh, in the next part, I will talk about those conodons from, from the Moscovian Casimovian boundary interval, about this fauna and the biostratigraphy. Next slide, please. The Conodon study on the Nachin section was begun in 1980s. The zonation of the Nachin section has been gradually refined and revised. You can see on left, on right, sorry. The Conodon from the Oscovian Hasimovian boundary, however, were more detailedly studied since 2010. Next slide, please. In 2010, many new Svadlina and uh, Idogonatotos forms were found and illustrated. For, for example, elements within the lineage Swad I to Tupantus, you can see from the middle one, and new forms of Svadlina as well, you can see from the left and, uh, and the right ones. Next slide, please.
And later, the SWAT I to Tubatus lineage was recognized in the Nachin section. And the Swadlina species, including Subexelsa and other species, were identified. Next slide, please. Here last year, we integrated with previous work a total of 26 condylon zones from Aprovisian to Gazillian can be recognized in the Nachin section. The Moscovian Kasimovian boundary interval includes Protoscansis, Sapixelsa, Machlina, Tubatus, Magnificus, and Guidoensis zones. These zones, you can see the light pink on the, on the right, is the study interval presented in this talk. Next, please. Well, in this interval, we have collected 157 chordon samples. 81 of them are bad by bad samples. You can see the little colored squares in, on, the, on the right. And more than 2,000 chordon elements were recovered a total of 30, uh, 37 species and at least 10 unnamed species were identified. Idagnatodos and Swadlina dominate the condylon fauna. Other genera such as uh, Neogonatodos, Diplogonatodos, Gondolela, Adeto are very rare. Streptogonatodos only appears at the top of this interval. Next slide, please. Based on the new condom data, we updated the condom zonation with a new Hecli zone below the Tubatu zone and above the Maklina zone. And uh, following, I will briefly introduce the characters of those zones. Next slide, please. The sub zone in the Nachin section can be subdivided in lower and upper parts. The lower is defined by the primitive form of sub -excelsa. You can see the left one, and the upper part is defined by the typical form, the two on the right. Next slide, please. The lower part of the sub excelsa zone is dominated by Podoskensis, Oblicus, and Shanxiensis forms. And uh, those forms are disapp disappearing in the upper part. Several unnamed new species occur. Sub excelsa in this zone is rep represented by rare, very rare primitive forms show in the previous slides. And of course, uh, Expansus and uh, Affinis notocarinata also occur. Next slide, please. In the upper part of the sub excelsa zone, sub excelsa became dominate. Uh, a lot of new idiognatodos occur. For example, Swat I. Cerciferis, Priguidoensis, and uh, Swadlina Lenny and Nodocarinata also occur, and uh, many, many new unnamed forms. Next slide, please. Here are some unnamed new Idognatodos from the upper part of the sub excelsa zone. Well, they don't have a name yet, so just to show. Next slide, please. And the following is the Maklina zone. In this zone, sub excelsa and Lenny are the most abundant. Maklina is relatively less common. Some unnamed new Idognatodos are still common. And the new Gnatodos disappear in this zone. Next slide, please. Then is the Hecli zone. It spans a very short interval, you can see in the right in green. Most specimens in this zone are juveniles and uh, subadults, and uh, most of the older Idognatodus and the Swadlina species became extinct within. 
except of SWOT I, Sociferous, Project Great Resistance to Great Resistance Transition, and SWOT I to Hecali to Tobato's Transition. And the spe specimens within the SWOT I to Tobato's Transition are difficult to distinguish because of uh, the, the small size of them. And uh, next slide, please. And here are the components of the HEC lysome elements within the SWAT I to HEC li to Tobatus lineage. Also on the right, you can see Cerciferous and the Proagrito Ensis to Grito Ensis uh, transition. Next slide, please. The Tobatus zone, the follow, follow one, in this zone, SWAT I, HEC li are common, and uh, Sagittalis also occur. Other species are very rare. Next slide, please. Okay, here are elements of the Tubatus zone. We can see Swat I, Hecli, Tubatus, and uh, Sagittalis. Next slide, please. The next zone is Magnificus zone. In this zoom, Magnificus, this species, is exclusively abundant and dominates this zoom. Sagittalis is also, also common. Other conodonts are rare. Uh, next slide, please. Here are some uh, Sagittalis specimens from the Magnificus zoom. In the upper view and the, another, another, another view. It's not lateral, so uh, next slide, please. All right, based on our new condom data, here is a modified correlation chart among major Pennsylvania basins. The colored lines indicates potential Moscovian and Moscovian Casimovian boundary marked by different species. Those are Subexcelsa, Hecli, Tuvatus, and uh, Sagittalis. You are already familiar with this. Okay, next one, next slide, please. Uh, since all four potential boundary markers for the Casimovian stage are found in the Nachin section, so I would like to explore if their evolutionary sequence is also documented in the Nachin section as well. Next slide, please. First is sub -excelsa. Based on our current continent material, the direct ancestor of Sagitelsa is not known. Inori, let's see the, the left one, Inori and Sagitelsa primitive form, the second one, and Sagitelsa, the typical one, this is the third line, the third column, may be linked, may be linked, but the stratigraphic interval between them are rather large. But the transformation from Sagitelsa to Marklin is better recorded. You can see the right two columns. Next, please. And another Swadlina evolutionary sequence from uh, Sapixelsa to Lenny is also well recorded in the Nachin section by losing the lobes. Next slide, please. Then the SWAT I to Hecli to Tobatus lineage. The first SWAT I recorded in Nachin section has relatively wide plant forms and a smaller nodes on lobe from left to right. The, the left two. And then the plant form of SWAT I became narrower, the second column, and gradually developed a cold of eccentric groove that is correct, uh, that character of a Hecli, the, the third and the fourth. And the carina of Hecla extends into the trans transverse ridges on the ventral part of the plant form. And then a uh, median nodosity extends to the end of the plant form and an uh, associated e eccentric groove that develops into Tubatus, the last member of, uh, of this lineage. And uh, from uh, Swat I to Hecla to Tubatus, this evolutionary sequence is re recorded in the Nachin section in a two meter interval. Next slide, please. 
How about Sagittalis? Well, let's compare with the Hecloi and the Sagittalis. They have similar in shape and close in stratigraphic range in the notching section. They both have an eccentric groove, but uh, different in height of lobes. Well, it seems they may be related, but uh, we don't know yet. Next slide, please. A brief summary of uh, their lineages. Uh, Subexcelsa may be evolved from Inori through Subexcelsa primitive form, but the direct ancestor of Subexcelsa is not known yet because of lack of fossil in a rather large interval. And the Swat Eye Hecla Tubatus lineage is recorded in a short interval in the Natchin section. And Sakitalis may be also within this uh, clade, but needs further work to verify. Next slide, please. The next part is uh, about the condom provisionalism during the Moscovian Kasimovian time. The purpose of this part is to explore how the endemic species would affect the international correlation and the relationship among different basins. Do they have a similar, similar fauna or, or not? Next slide, please. In 1984, a study has shown the Pennsylvanian conodons can be subdivided in two provinces, the American and the Tertian provinces. Although in that time, only few species were documented in the Tertian areas. You can see the right figure, the right figure, the right number. There were very few species were found in the Tertian realms. Next slide, please. And uh, we compiled a data set with 44 species of, of six ge genera. Among them, 32 species are Idogonatodus and uh, Swadlina. In this data set, one, you can see from the, from the right, one indicates a species present in a certain area, and zero indicates their absence. We use cluster anal analysis, non-metrical multidimensional scaling, and the network analysis to analyze the condom provisionalism. Next slide, please. First, show by a uh, frequency analysis on the left, more than one third of the species uh, occurred only in a single area. And the species occurring in two basins represent about 30%. Widely distribu distributed species, which uh, represented in three and four basins, is about one third, in which only about 11% species, uh, that's five species, were rec recorded in all four basins. Next slide, please. And the portion of endemic species in each basin is shown on left. We can see the endemism is much stronger in North America than in South China and Donetsk Basin and Moscow Basin. And a total of uh, 13 out of 32 species are endemic in North America, but uh, it, could be, it could be caused by multiple factors. For instance, paleogeography, research level, fossil preservation, and faces, etc. Next slide, please. And uh, we use cluster analy analy anal analysis to explore the relationship of quantum fauna among different basins, because there are many indices can be applied in the cluster analysis. Here are two examples on the right. When, when we use different indices, the, the first one is a Raup Creek similarity coefficient. It clusters Donetsk Basin and uh, Moscow Basin together with South China, while North America is remote clustered. The other one, the, the, the right one, is Jakarta similarity coefficient. Donetsk and uh, Moscow are grouped together, of course, while North America and South China are clustered with a low similarity. These show different results, so we will need another tool to confirm which is closer to which. 
Next slide, please. Okay, the non metrical multi dimensional scaling analysis with a minimum spanning tree is a similar technique with cluster, but uh, it was considered more subjective by other researchers. This result shows that uh, Moscow Basin and uh, Donetsk Basin are closely, are clearly they are close, and uh, they are closer related to South China than North America. Uh, next slide, please. At last, a uh, network analysis shows more virtualized relationship between species and uh, basins. We can see strong provincialism in North America. 30 out of uh, 70 endemic species are, are recorded. Luckily, those species, they don't have much correlation value, at least for now. And the endemic species are mainly idognatodos. Only one or two endemic species are recorded in South China, Moscow Basin, and Donetsk Basin. South China shares species with Eastern Europe, but its fauna is unique because it also shares several species with North America. Because there are many endemic species in North America, so the South China fauna is calculated to be more similar with Eastern Europe. Next slide, please. The, the result would be clear. The North American and the Tertian provinces can be recognized. The Tertian province can be subdivided into Eastern Europe and the South China sub provinces. But as, uh, as colonial studies continue in, in those areas, additional information could refine our understanding of the, this provincialism. Next slide, please. Combine all the information, I would like to discuss the Casimovian boundary markers based on the Nachim material. Next slide, please. First one is Subexcelsa. It had advantages, good, good ones. It's close to the traditional boundary in the type area. It has been found from Donetsk Basin, Moscow Basin, South China, and maybe North America mid-continent. And uh, advanced portrait cities can be an auxiliary basic marker for it. But we don't, we don't know the direct ancestor of it. That means the lineage of it is not clear. And there are something else need to be done. Next slide, please. The first, the morphology of sub from uh, from different basins are slightly different. They probably represent different evolutionary stages of sub sub but uh, since we don't know, do, don't know its evolutionary stage yet, so we cannot say that. But uh, for me, as a coronal specialist, I would say that they are different. Next slide, please. The second species concept of sub and uh, similar forms needs to be clarified. Uh, you can see on the left, the holotype of sub from the Donetsk Basin, and the others are all sub from uh, Moscow Basin. These are, and on the right one too, those are unnamed species from Nachin section, probably Idognatodos. Both fauna are not typical sub as shown in previous ones. I would say it is necessary to study the taxonomy of sub and uh, and uh, these condoms show in the slides. Next slide, please. Then Hecla. It has been found in Moscow Basin, South China, and North America. Its lineage has been verified in both South China and North America, but it is higher than the traditional boundary in the type area. And more importantly, next slide, please. Uh, Hecla, somehow it's very similar with some Sagittalis specimens, even the height of the lobes. 
Although those specimens are not lateral view, but if you take a look of the first from, a, from, a, from a Russia and the second from a North America, you can see the height of the nodes are getting lower. Next slide, please. Well, the same problem may be also in Trubatos and Sagittarius, at least for, for, for the Moscow Basin Trubatos. Next slide, please. Well, it is now impossible to say which species can define the global Casimovian, global Casimovian stage, but we can say which is better based on current knowledge. So here is a purely subjective rating of, uh, of those spe uh, species evaluated by the FAD with traditional boundary level and the distribution, lineage, taxonomy, and the auxiliary marker in pink shows their disadvantages. So currently, Hecli seems to be the best one. Next slide, please. And the conclusion. The Moscovian Casimovian boundary interval of the Natchin section is dominated by Idogonatodos and uh, Swadlina. Other genera are rare, and the six zones can be recognized. All four potential boundary markers are recorded. Direct ancestor of uh, Sapicelsa is not known yet. The Swat, Swat I Hecli to Tubatus lineage is recognized. Sagittalis may be also within this clade and uh, significant colonial provincialism between the North America and Tertium that is recognized. However, this provincialism may be refined after colonial studies continues in those area. And considering some important aspects, Hecli seems to be the best marker for the global Moscovian casimovian boundary currently. Next slide, please. At last, in the aspect of colonial, the taxonomy, evolutionary, evolutionary sequence, or, and the correlation potential of Sapicelsa, as well as the relationship between Sagittalis and uh, Swat I to Tubatus lineage, need to be solved. And the uh, morphometrics method will be very useful. And uh, of course, studies of other disciplines are also important for, for this boundary. Next slide, please. And uh, those are some chronons in the Moscovian Casimovian boundary interval in the Nachin section. And uh, that would be that would be all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, most interesting talk. Um, do we have any questions? I haven't received anything in the chat at this point. Um, my, I, I thought your comment at the end on the morphometrics is a most interesting one. There seem to be um, abundant markers on conodonts. I don't, again, not knowing much about conodonts or conodont taxonomy, um, but it would seem there's almost uh, a, 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 a many, too, too many of them. There's so many places where you could measure all the different points and the sizes. Has that been explored very much with, with, with regard to these uh, taxonomic uh, approaches? It would seem to be something that's, that could be done with, with uh, a variety of modern software. Well, about this question, uh, actually the American colleagues has started already. Nicholas, uh, a former student of Jim Barrick, he has published uh, like a lot of papers about exploring the mathematics method and uh, also, uh, we collaborated with him and Jim Barrick working on the Casimovian Gazelian boundary conodons. Uh, actually, if you see the, uh, I didn't finish my, my, my presentation because there are backups. There are two slides showing the morphometrics methods to, to we, how, how we define the landmarks and how we compare with different groups. Yeah, we actually, we have, we have done this already. So I would say it's a, Possible and promising. There is time to. You know, there's time to show those slides. Would you like to? Um, we put those last slides up. If, that, if you'd like to show, there we go. Yeah. 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 So that 
you can you can discuss them if you'd like. It, it's, it looks interesting to me what you're doing. Well, <clears throat> these are endocrine totals, and we can choose this is it is called plan plan planned for landmark method, uh, designed by Nicholas, the author. It, it, this name is too long. Hong Gan Camp. Eh? So we we have uh, several different types of landmarks, the type one, type two, and type three. And actually all Idogna totals species can be defined by those landmarks. So we, if we like, and if we have uh, enough specimens to analyze, we can compare, compare all Idogna totals together. And of course that's a difficult work, but uh, we, we, have, we have already started this uh, anal analyze. And you can see from the PC, the right figure, there are di different colors you see, red and blue. Actually, there are kind of a separation of different buffer types. So we can use this method to discriminate different species, different buffer types, and even lineages, if you see the next one. Next slide. Next slide. Can we? Yeah. It's a example of, uh, of course, it's not Edognatodus, but it's shown how we, how we use this method to define uh, a lineage from, uh, this is for Muscovium. You can see the uh, red ones and the blue ones. Those are totally different types. Okay? So we find that uh, red ones evolved to uh, blue ones on the right. You can see the by specimen and by metric data. So in both way. Cool. Most interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, we oh, have a question you. from Spencer also. Uh, Spencer, you want to okay. unmute? Surprise, I have a question. So, uh, Kaiyu, you say in the, in the notching section, you said the main facies are wacky stones, pack stones, and grain stones. Okay. And you have a very well documented Hecali lineage, but not a sub excelsa lineage. So I wonder, is that a function of, you know, those three facies are going to represent different rates of sedimentation and condensation. Is it that the Hecali zone is just in a really expanded, you know, zone interval that's capturing a lot of time versus sub excelsa? Have you looked at that? Well, uh, probably the facies could be a factor that controls the distribution of conodons, of course, but another reason maybe, just maybe, because in that interval, we didn't have many samples collected because we used to con concentrate it on the higher levels, which in that time, the working workshop was uh, designed, they decide, they decide to, to, to explore the potential of psychedelics and tobacco. So we took a lot of sample on that level, but we didn't pay much attention on the lower level, at sub Celsa level. And what's another question? No, I just, I mean, okay. So it is a, it may just be, you're saying an effect of uneven sampling. Maybe if you sample more of the sub Celsa level, you'll finally get, is that a plan? Are you going to do that soon? Yeah, we are going to, to do that. Of course it is. Uh, yeah, because the notching section is a relatively condensed section. So we have to, we have to collect bed by bed so we can trace the lineage that we did for uh, Hecali Tobatus lineage and we success. So we hope we will success to find this lineage. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you. I have another question. Um, has there been any, uh, or can, is it possible to use the, the morphometric data in a phylogenetic analysis of some kind is, you know, um, that would give you sort of a mathematical uh, basis for the phylogeny um, rather, well, than direct, rather than directly tracing? So your question is to morphometrics measure for the phylogeny, yeah? Yeah, something like a cladistic analysis or something like that. Yeah, I think that's also possible. If you ha if we have uh, enough data, let's say one more type for one hundred uh, specimen, we can we can come we can analyze them and form a data set and a chart. And yeah, I think that's possible. But we are exploring this method now. It is pity that uh, Nicholas 
is not presenting this workshop. If he's here, he can discuss with you more. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. 